Whoa, what happened? Somehow I scrolled all the way down. Oh, so we're finally at the last one? No, I actually Thank scrolled Buddha. all the way up. No! You're listening. Say it. To no, say me? you're listening. I'm listening. No, say you're listening. You're listening. To the worst to marathon ever. To the worst marathon ever. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Doonstief Audio Fiction Magazine's Worst Marathon Ever. Second. Oh, this isn't the worst one? Oh, no, I, I, you're, you're probably right the first This time. might be up for... I think this this may take the cake against that other one. What kind of cake is it? Do you like carrot cake? Yeah, carrot cake's all right. Oh. I'm not a big cake person. Really? Not a cake You would eater. not know from looking at you. What about hostess cakes? Yeah, hostess cakes kind of lost their charm back when I was, I don't know, a child. There's a few that I could, I could probably still eat a hostess cupcake. Those aren't too bad. Okay, so we're back. Are we still doing that Pixar thing? And we're still doing that oh. Pixar thing. Can you believe it? That was a mistake, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. there was probably too many rules. Marathons are supposed to be 13. Wait, crap. No, they're supposed to be 26. This just should, should have been a half marathon, and we should have quit at 13. We did, like, the whole month of February once, though, right? That's we what did. the actual first worst marathon no. was, right? No, that was Dupo Remo. The first worst marathon was somewhere in the summertime. Uh, it's like, it's hard for me to remember. The I 13 mean, nights of Halloween, those have always been 13. Half marathons. Should have taken a clue from that. But we didn't. So we're back with rule number 18. 18. Okay. Is that uh, is that light the end of the tunnel that I'm seeing? Or? No, of course not. Okay. You should know better. Uh, rule number 18. There is no... Wait, I already used that like way back in... To four months ago five. when we started this. Okay. Rule number 18. You have to know yourself. The difference between doing your best and fussing. Story is testing, not refining. Okay, I don't get that at all. First thing I it's, thought of was, before you can love someone else, you must love yourself. Oh, gosh. I, that's one of my 15... No, it's one of my 22 least favorite sayings is that that you've got to love yourself first. Oh, it's, geez, uh, okay. it's good, bad, uh, you must love you. Okay, that's way better than the other, but... <laughs> Labels not make you happy. Thanks, Satan. Uh, it's Satin. Okay, read that thing again, but... Just, yeah, I couldn't make heads or tails of it. Okay. You have to know yourself. You have to know yourself. Maybe that's a better way to read it. The difference between doing your best and fussing. Story is testing, not refining. This is my take is on it. Is that a sentence? Is it? Is you have to know the difference between something and fussing? Is that a sentence, or is that part of a sentence? It's what? part of a sentence. It says, you have to know yourself, colon, the difference between doing your best and fussing. Period. So you need to know... So it doesn't have anything to do with knowing yourself. It's like you yourself have to know the difference between fussing and doing your best, right? I think you have to know yourself well enough to know when you are just fussing now. Now you're just like, oh, I've got to make every last thing absolutely perfect. Um, Is that, wait, what does fussing mean? The word fussing. And do I you gotta, want, like the Merriam-Webster definition? I, well, yeah, I, I don't, all I can think of is C-3PO or you've got a fussy baby. Let's see, fussy, that's a word I'm thinking. What is fussing? That's a verb. Fussing is the verb of being fussy. Bullcrap. <laughs> That can't be real. Is that a word? I don't think that's a word. It's a word. No. Look it up. I don't want to look it up. I want you to tell me what it is. I'm getting the dictionary.com definition of the word spastic. Announcer man. Dictionary.com, you teach me nothing. 
Thank you, announcer man. Yes. What are you doing back there in the backseat anyways? <laughs> I have no idea what he would say that's good. And... Fuss and feathers. See, again, another thing that doesn't box. exist. Fuss box, come on. <laughs> you do an image search for fuss box, and this is not safe for work, boys and girls. That's right. Noun, an excessive display of anxious attention or activity. Anxious attention or activity. Needless, useless bustle. They made a fuss over the new baby. Oh, okay. Well, no, make a fuss. I've heard of that. An argument or noisy dispute. They had a fuss about who should wash the dishes. Okay. A complaint or protest, especially about something relatively unimportant. Or verb. To make a fuss. No. Make is the <laughs> verb in that sentence. To make fuss much a ado nor- about and- trifles. Yeah, see, fuss wasn't even in that sentence. You'll never finish the job if you fuss over details. I think that uh, is probably uh, the definition thereafter. Fussing over detail. I think what they're trying to say with this... What are we calling these again? Story rules? The rules of Pixar, right? This rule, I think what they're trying to say is you need to know when you are still testing things out and when you are actually just like, okay, I'm, I'm just going to endlessly do this until I die. You know, it's like you always say, you're like, oh, yes, I would publish this story. I just want to do one more rewrite. Let me just read it through and make sure that it's perfectly polished. And then you'll read it through. And then you're like, hmm, okay, I'm just going to put this one away for a little while. And then I'll do one more rewrite after it's mellowed and, you know, settled. And then I'll be ready to publish it. And that's not going to ever happen because every time it's going to be the same thing. But, oh, I, I, I found so many problems that I'm sure I didn't get them all. So I'll just do one more rewrite. And in the rewrite, I created several new problems <laughs> that I'm going to have to fix in the next rewrite. You're I, describing me perfectly, but... I think that <laughs> is what she's trying to say is you need to know when you're just doing that. Versus when you're still really, truly uh, working on it and saying, okay, you know, this, something, something doesn't work here and it still needs to be fixed. Let me try something else. Let me try this. Let me try that. Instead of just, okay, the story's probably perfect as is, but I probably need to fuss over it a little bit more and see if I can find something that I can fix. Okay, but there was a thing about your best work in that sentence. And to me, that's hard. Because, okay, you have to know yourself whether it's your best work, right? Or whether you're fussing. And your best work... It says you have to know the difference between doing your best and fussing. Okay. I mean, you and I both know the difference between half-assing something... And doing your best. But... What's the difference between doing your best and fussing? Yeah. Because... Yeah, as you used me as an example of, you know, child predator. And... <laughs> yes, you, I can always find something that could be better. I can always find something to expand upon. It's like, oh, I don't like this sentence. But if I change the sentence, I'm going to have to change this the, the sentence after it. Let me change this whole part and all that. But... You're saying that only I can tell if I'm doing my best or if I'm fussing or the trick of this point, this rule of Pixar, is to know the difference. Yeah, I think that's the thing. Not that only you can know. I bet that other people can tell before you yourself can tell, probably. Other people can read through and be like, wow, this is good and it's good as is and you go with it. Whereas you'll be like, oh, yeah, I think it still needs one polish. One more. I just got some nice polish at the shoe store and a new brush. So I'm going to polish it some. Okay. Well, but see, so that I think that's what hand. they're saying is the trick is you have to know okay. yourself. But immediately I think of Baz Luhrmann saying, 
if you learn how to do this, please <laughs> let me know. Because, I mean, we had whole episodes of how do you know whether your story is good enough. This, that was the Karen Carpenter version. Yeah. Didn't that sound a little bit like? Okay. In my mind. Bit, yeah. And, and, you know, that's a question that it's really difficult for me to answer. Just uh, the last week, I got together with a bunch of my high school buddies. And this guy, who's always a big fan of my writing, brought up this story that I wrote in 1991. Uh-huh. And he's like, oh, that's, that's still the best thing you ever wrote. Oh, that's good. And I just, I cringe every time he brings <laughs> it up. Because here's a funny thing is, every time he brings it up, it's two or three years from the last time he brought it up. And so, I, you know, I feel like I've gotten better. Yeah, but how much but, has that guy read of what you've written? It's mm, a He's, good point. He says that's the still the best thing you've ever written, but he, it's probably the last thing he ever read that you wrote. <laughs> I mean, you can't take that guy's opinion for it. Oh, no, no. I'm just saying, you know, he thinks that that's my best work or that that's, that story really spoke to him. But I just, oh, I cringe. I shudder when I think of that story. You know, that was something I wrote as a kid. They would just, if I looked at it now, I just, oh, I'd ro- I, I, I would probably have to burn it. <laughs> it, but despite the fact that it's just a digital file on a computer, you'd burn the computer. <laughs> Only way to be sure. Yeah. <laughs> Where are the files? So the other day we were actually talking, I mean, just another example of that. And I think as far as that goes, you know when you're doing your best or when you're trying your hardest, I guess. But yeah, I mean, how do you know if it's good or not? Like you said that you've read... Recently, two books by Brandon Sanderson. Yes. One was The Way of Kings, which you said is just great, really good, well done, really detailed. It's uh, alive. And it's heavy enough that you could set it on the roof of your car and drive at 70 miles an hour and then park at the end of the journey and it would still be there. Well, see, it made an imprint in the right. metal. Of the car. <laughs> and then what was the other one? Steel Heart? Yeah. Which you didn't think was good at all. No, and it you blew were my wondering, mind that it's the same writer. Yeah, you were wondering how could it be the same guy? And I think that's probably something that I guess everybody, I think, goes through. You know, I know that I've written some stories that I think are good, that I would say are my best. But I don't know that... <sighs> People who hear them, or I guess they never read them. They don't, if they ever have seen anything of mine, they've heard it. Um, I don't know if they would agree. Somebody hears that and goes, oh, yeah, this is his best. Or if they'd hear that and goes, yeah, I didn't, I didn't like that one. That was kind of crap. I mean, I, I, I think when it comes down to it, a lot of that is just every different person it, it has different tastes. And they're going to like, you know, something. And... Others are going to hate it. You know, I love Ender's Game by Orson Scott Card. Probably my favorite book ever. Mm -hmm. But when I shared that with my wife, she's like, meh, it's okay. And it wasn't the worst thing I've ever read. But I'm not going to read it again or something. Whereas I've read it again every few years, I read it again. So, you know, everybody has different tastes. She reads all the time, but she doesn't want to read that. Because it's not her cup of tea. So when it comes to that, I don't think there's any way to know. But you can know when you're doing your best. And say, okay, you know, I tried my hardest with this one. Take it or leave it. Okay. Like no. it or lump it. I hear you. I mean, it's, it's, it's much easier for me as a narrator to know, to say, I did my best on that. You know, I, I gave it my best work. I really, really worked hard on that. I didn't phone it in or whatever. But with writing, you know, sometimes the inspiration just isn't there. And you have to, and maybe this is a Pixar rule, but you have to decide how hard you have to push it to try and get inspiration. You know what I mean? It's like perspiration does not necessarily equal inspiration. But maybe at some point enough perspiration will overcompensate for the fact that there wasn't any inspiration there. But, you know, I don't know. I mean, that we've talked about things that just write themselves where you just, wow, I, 
it was like I was channeling something or, you know, oh, it was so, so great. And is that your best work or is it when you're just like, oh, geez, I stayed up nights just thinking and thinking and pouring over this thing. Is that your best work? You know, Dean Wesley Smith once said. Oh, no. That no one will know the difference between what's your best work and what isn't. They'll be reading your book and they're not going to know which day it was. That, I don't know, you were sick that day and every word that you were typing was just like agony. You're just like, oh, I should go to bed, but I have to write my goal words today. They're not going to know the difference. They're just going to be reading and they'll read from beginning to end. And they're not going to know, oh, at page 300, he really started flagging. But then when it got to page 347, it picked back up. So, yeah, I don't know how you can... I don't think there's a way to say one way or the other. And I don't know if the channeling ones are the best or not. Like your professor would say, that's just the day when you were stealing somebody else's idea. You were regurgitating something you saw on television is what yeah. you would say. Yeah, Yeah, I don't know. Uh, okay, I mean, it's this is an interesting one because I don't, I don't immediately think of a Pixar movie, an example, or... And I, I, I don't immediately think of something in my life, although I did mention audiobooks and all that, but I just... You have to know yourself whether it's your best work or whether you're fussing. And uh, I, I guess that's a that's something that every writer must learn. And uh, Yeah, you just need to learn thing, when to call it a day. Say, so, you know what? That's it. That's what it's going to be. The, okay. the thing you mentioned, though, with... Uh, Dean Wesley Smith. Oh boy, I wish I had that kind of discipline. Where it's like, oh, I'm so sick. <laughs> I can't. I can't even hold my head up. But I've got to get those words in. I, I just 35 more words. Holy crap! Okay, we got to get out of here. This guy. That it, guy just about ran us over. It's a good thing my car is smaller. He would have crushed us. Want to head over? I can't. I know we can't see, see out the windshield. Okay, well let's let's say goodbye to people oh. and we'll go to a different place. Okay. Okay. So tomorrow we will... We, tomorrow we'll be in a different parking lot a, where hopefully the street sweeper doesn't kill us. Yeah, I'm oh so close to shrieking the F word right now. <laughs> because it's funny, when we parked here, right before we started recording, I said, do you really want to record here? And you said, yeah, well, this is going to be fine. Unless that street sweeper comes by. <laughs> and there he is. I thought he came later. I guess he starts about now. All right, so uh, I guess I mean we've probably done our piece for on this thing, anyways. Well, we could fuss. Yeah, mm -hmm. we could keep fussing about it, but I think we've done our best. So we're gonna <laughs> say that's it, and we'll move to the other parking lot and continue. Okay. Or not continue. Start a new one. Yes. So we'll see you then. Be well. Bye, everybody. If you're ever in a generous mood, or even if you're not, we'd love it if you donated. That Gets My Goat is released under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license, meaning share it with everyone, but don't sell it or change it. Those aren't too bad, but uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know that I could eat a Twinkie anymore. When I was a child, I thought as a child, how does that go? I hate that. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways... I could eat a Hostess cupcake out of uh, Mila's Kunis. Oh, my. Um, okay, so... Oh, my. Uh, there was a picture of George Strait somebody had posted on Facebook, and then a picture of George Takei, and it said, George Not Strait. 